Disease is only a part of it, for the insect has an even deadlier method of crippling man. It is to strike directly at his food source. Each day as man's population increases, he finds himself in deepening competition with the insect to devour the earth's resources. The insect has been called a walking digestive tract, and not without reason. To support his own life, he will consume as much as a hundred times his own weight each day, which to each of us would be like eating an entire cow, a herd of 30 each month. And as the insect population grows, he naturally needs more. To those who have witnessed the hideous display of appetite, the outcome is clear. If allowed to continue on his reproductive rampage, the insect will defoliate the earth. the race for food is to be the deciding conflict, let no one say it came without warning. From the beginning of time, man has stood helpless, watching the very soil he nurtures give birth to his deadliest enemy. A ghost of biblical terror, he rises still, summoning his sleeping troops to pillage and destroy everything that lies in their way. In the innocent disguise of grasshoppers, they will wait endless years until something in the air signals the time is right. Then massing together, their bodies begin to change. Like Jekyll into Hyde, great jaws and wings burgeoning outward as they begin their monstrous flight into hell. Too late, they are recognized as the locusts. is a single animal, its body covering 400 miles, its mouth consuming 80,000 tons of food each day. In a single week, it will devour what could have fed one million people for an entire year. technology, man fights back. To most, man's efficient poison will bring instant death. But the few who survive will develop an immunity, a tolerance to ingest the poison with no harmful effect. Returning to the silence of the earth, they will pass on this immunity to new generations of billions. Too late is man becoming aware of his mistake. Yeah. 
first year we had them licked. We sprayed DDT like everybody else. A couple days, he's gone. I mean, we did see one. Said, oh boy, thank God for that good old DDT, you know? And what about last year? Well, last year we sprayed Dildren. This regular DDT just didn't seem to do it. I mean, just didn't work. And this Dildren is maybe, oh, 100 times more powerful. And it killed them? Well, some of them, about half. You know, we got maybe half a crop. And what about this year? Well, this year. This year we sprayed with DDT and Deldrin. And we sprayed and we sprayed and didn't do any good. I mean, it, they just kept coming. It was almost like they liked it, like, like it tasted good. We, we must have sprayed 10 times more than normal. But you killed them? Yeah, we killed them. And what about your crop? Well, it's condemned. It's poison. We licked them all right, but we got to burn it. We got to burn it all. In fighting the insect, we have killed ourselves, polluted our water, poisoned our wildlife, permeated our own flesh with deadly toxins. The insect becomes immune, and we are poisoned. In fighting with superior intellect, we have outsmarted ourselves. Before marching into battle, it's wise to assess not the weaknesses of one's enemy, but the strengths of one's enemy. Not only his innate physical and mental capacity, but his technology. If technology seems a strange word to apply to insects, you're in for a surprise. Let's start with communication. In its most basic form, one creature's ability to communicate with the next. With the use of a highly sensitive microphone, I found the silence around me to be filled with sound. Not only sound, but language. Dozens of languages as different from one another as Japanese is to English. English is to Russian. Listen. So the insect communicates by sound. But only man can transmit invisible signals across great distances of open space, right? Wrong. Look up into the sky. It's filled with invisible messages you'll never be able to detect. Without machines or electricity or the label of genius, the insects were using the airwaves for transmission long before man ever set foot on Earth. <laughs> 